All right, so we've seen how Deb has uh, now fixed the defect and delivered the change and ran a, submitted another build. So let's go ahead now and as Tanuj, let's make sure that the defect is, is indeed fixed by rerunning the same test case we ran uh, in a previous segment. Okay, so let's go ahead and navigate back to the demo here and playing the role as Tanuj, let's go ahead and now log into Rational Quality Manager. And once in uh, Quality Manager here, again, we'll, we'll see how Tanuj got instant notification here of, uh, of the, uh, the latest build from, um, from Deb. So we can see uh, that a new build has been uh, run here. And again, we can go ahead and open up the details of that particular build and make sure that, uh, that it is indeed ready for, uh, uh, for testing. So looking at the details, we can we can see that uh, it is indeed ready for test. And if we want to, we can also look at the uh, the work item report against us, which is that uh, that particular defect. All right, so let's uh, go back to uh, the execution records. And what we'll do now is rerun the same test case that we ran previously. And hopefully this time, if uh, uh, Deb uh, fixed it correctly, we'll see that uh, it'll pass. So let's go ahead and... Uh, run the seconds uh, rollover, uh, test the lap in the seconds rollover. So let's go ahead and rerun this test case. So again, this will just take a few moments to uh, run the command line uh, argue, uh, the command line scripts for uh, you know running this test. And uh, hopefully, uh, like I said, that uh, Deb's uh, latest changes will have uh, fixed the issue here. So it uh, is now executing the tests within Test Conductor. and analyzing the test results and we're almost complete it is now return returning the results back to a uh, quality manager and this looks much better so we can see now that execution is completed and if we go ahead and show the results we now see that the test now did indeed pass uh, again we can go ahead and look at the results uh, here we can see that uh, now uh, when the seconds rollover happens, it does indeed uh, calculate the lap time correctly, uh, so it does indeed pass. Okay, so uh, what we can do now is, again, we can go ahead and assign a, a build against this uh, particular uh, uh, execution run here. So we'll go ahead and choose that latest build that, that Deb just ran there. And let's go ahead and save that. And uh, now what we'll do is we'll go ahead and uh, log out here. And we'll go ahead and wrap it up with uh, Scott, who will go ahead and check out the latest uh, results and, and uh, close out the, uh, uh, the story that we started with. All right, now that Tanuj has confirmed that the, uh, the defect is fixed, now let's go ahead and uh, finish off uh, this, uh, this thread with... Um, uh, Scott, uh, well, everyone, in, for that matter, as you can see throughout this uh, presentation and demo, that you know, really everyone can monitor the sprint. There's lots of uh, notifications of, of when uh, different events occur and the, and the team members are updated. We're just going to go ahead and finish this off now with, uh, with Scott, who's going to go ahead now and, and see that uh, uh, the story has been complete and go ahead and close it, close everything out. So let's go ahead and log into uh, Rational Team Concert as Scott. And uh, what Scott can do is he can go ahead now and again uh, jump into the uh, the plans view and take a look at the developers task board to see what uh, what has been completed. Uh, so jumping into uh, Sprint 3 here uh, we can go ahead and take a look at the planned items and uh, again switch to that uh, developers task board and uh, what you can see here is uh, again uh, what's to be done uh, you know what's to do what's uh, you know what's in progress and what's been completed uh, and what we can also do here is uh, uh, take a look at the work items maybe query for a certain work item uh, so for instance here like the lap timer control and if we go ahead and take a look uh, he can see here in the links tab uh, all the various uh, information that is tied to um, that is tied to the uh, the uh, 
the story here. So things like the actual test case execution, uh, the lower level children tasks, uh, the, uh, the higher level epic, uh, any reported builds against this. So all this information is easily tied together. And one of the things that Scott can do is now jump back to doors and update uh, doors with the latest uh, test information. So uh, navigating over here to doors, what we'll do is we'll log in and we'll grab the latest test results from RQM so that we have traceability from the requirement uh, to the uh, the test results. And once this is uh, highlighted, the, that requirement there, we can see that. What we can do now is we can go ahead and uh, run a uh, test report. This will go ahead and gather the latest data uh, from Rational Quality Manager. And what we should see here is that these fields here for the lap timer will be filled in with the, uh, the test cases that Tanuj ran and the, uh, the overall status of that, whether it uh, passed or failed. So uh, this really gives us a clear view of the requirements and you know, the downstream test cases that they're tied to and uh, the overall results uh, of those test cases. So uh, this just takes a moment here to gather that data. Now the other thing that we could have tied here indoors uh, is you can also uh, easily link the requirements right to the uh, Rhapsody model artifacts as well. So you, ha you can have uh, requirements traceability to the, the, the model artifacts as well as the, uh, as the um, uh, test cases and, and the results of those test cases. Okay, so we're almost done here. And we can see that the test report was generated successfully, going back to doors just to see that. Here we can see the lap timer is now filled in uh, with the test lap or timer test case, and that test case, uh, the verdict of that is uh, passed. So that's great information that we can that we can easily view now. And you know, a lot of these a lot of these things that we're showing are, are all automated, whereas the uh, you know it's uh, can be very difficult to try to do these uh, all this uh, uh, tying of information together manually. All right, so uh, everything looks good there. Uh, so let's just go ahead and finish off the story. Uh, we'll go ahead now and say that this lap timer control that we started off with uh, is now uh, complete testing. We'll save that officially uh, uh, ending the, uh, the scenario here. All right, so let's go back to the slide set and wrap things up. All right, so let's go ahead and uh, recap uh, what we did in this presentation and demo. Um, what we saw here was really a, a day in the life of uh, a, a team, a product team, developing uh, an application for uh, a real-time embedded type application. And we really saw how uh, different roles and responsibilities, how they, they did their, their uh, everyday activities, and, and really how they, they work together and how the IBM solution really provides a lot of automation in the communication among the team members as well as you know the tying together of, of information that, or artifacts that that each of the team members produce uh, and we ultimately you know went through a sprint and, and added a new uh, feature uh, to our stopwatch and, and tested it and uh, uh, made sure everything uh, worked as as expected so I just want to thank everyone for uh, watching this uh, uh, demonstration, and uh, you can learn more at, uh, at uh, the IBM Rational uh, uh, website. Uh, feel free to contact us uh, to learn more about any of the, uh, the products uh, you saw in this demonstration or the entire uh, solution. Thank you.